Hey everyone, welcome back to another shrimp parasite removal compilation. Today, we're gonna go out and see how many shrimp we can slurp up and rescue from parasites. Let's go. The mud in this estuary is full of shrimps that are infected by these invasive isopod parasites. Over 50% of the shrimp I find have a parasite. Here's a shrimp right here. The first hole we check, there's an infected shrimp. So that's how common these shrimp parasites are. The very first hole that we slurped in, we found a shrimp and it was infected with a parasite. Around 90% of all female Eubojibia pugitensis mud shrimp are affected by these Ortheon griffinus parasites. I wasn't expecting to find a shrimp with a parasite this fast, but now that we have, I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's get this parasite removed and free the shrimp. Now that we've got the parasite removed, we're going to release the shrimp and go on a mission to find more shrimp that we can help today. The variety of native wildlife in this area is amazing, but these parasites can lead to the collapse of the entire ecosystem. And removing a few parasites isn't going to solve the problem completely, but what we can do is raise awareness to help shrimps like Tabitha here produce eggs and have babies of her own. When a shrimp gets infected with a parasite, it prevents them from creating eggs. This shrimp is lucky. Let's put her back home so that she can go start her family. Now that Tabitha is making her way home, we're going to search for more shrimps to give another chance at a healthy life. We've got lots more shrimp rescues in this video, but if you're liking it so far, then be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. After I found that double whammy, I slurped and slurped and slurped I wasn't able to find any more shrimp. Okay, so the tide's coming in. I was able to get four shrimp and a couple of blisters on my hands, but that's okay. We're gonna remove these parasites from the shrimp, set the shrimp free, and make it a happy day for everybody. Let's do it. Removing these parasites isn't an easy task. The shrimp's exoskeleton is extremely fragile, and extreme care has to go into handling these shrimp. Every parasite has to be removed a little bit differently between shrimp, depending on the location of the parasite, the size of the parasite, and how fragile the exoskeleton of the shrimp is. The underside of the large female parasite is pink in color. That's the area of the parasite that is attached to the shrimp's gills. In pretty much all shrimp parasite cases, there's also a small white male attached to the top of the female parasite. It looks sort of like a roly-poly bug, and that's because they're in the same species of animals. The female parasite uses its small white arms to hang onto the gill flap, and that's how it stays attached to the shrimp. That's three shrimps saved, two to go. And be sure to stay tuned for the end of the video for some bonus shrimp parasite removals and a code that you can comment on my Instagram for a follow back. Sometimes while I'm trying to remove a parasite, the shrimp gets a little pinchy. It tries to get me, and sometimes it even does. But I've been pinched by shrimps before. It doesn't hurt too bad. Last but not least, this cute little shrimp. Let me know in the comments what you think her name should be. I'll pin the best name to the top of the comments.
Finally, we've gotten all of the parasites removed. I can't imagine how uncomfortable it is for the shrimps to have a parasite this big living in its body. Time to yeet these parasites and set our shrimpy friends free. Even after the tide came up and all of the shrimp holes were underwater, I still wanted to try and find more. But as hard as I tried, I wasn't able to find any. A ton of people ask me how I got into helping shrimp. When did I first learn about the parasites? How did I even know they existed? I first learned about these invasive parasites back in 2005 when I did work with Oregon State University and Hatfield Marine Science Center. I worked with their leading invasive species team and that's when I first learned about these parasites and the huge problem that they're having on this local ecosystem. It's also really nice to see a lot of you who care and are asking for ways that you can help with this problem. The best ways for you to help is to help me by raising awareness of invasive species and the negative impacts they have on ecosystems. And if you want to work more directly with these parasites, I would recommend getting a hold of Oregon State University and Hatfield Marine Science Center to help. And that's on the Oregon coast. Now, before I show you some of the bonus parasite removals from TikTok, I wanted to show you these really cool balloon kelp. When you squeeze them, they make a popping noise. Now, you don't want to squeeze too many of them because they are living organisms, but they are very interesting. It's a lot like the bubble wrap of the sea. And did you know that almost all species of kelp are edible? All kinds of animals from fish to humans eat kelp. And this species of kelp is super abundant here on the Oregon coast. One other really cool thing I wanted to show you is that when you go to the beach and you find big rocks like this, if you carefully flip them over, you'll be able to see tons of small shore crabs. These crabs are really friendly. They do have pinchers, but they don't ever really pinch. And when they do, it doesn't even hurt too bad. Take a look at this cutie. Sometimes they're shy. Sometimes they walk all over you. Sometimes they even do tricks. All right, little buddy. Thanks for hanging out with me. You're free. I love these crabs. They're so small, so cute, and so friendly. And there's a ton of them under every single rock out here in the bay. It's really fun to find them, really fun to hang out with them. Now get ready for some parasite removal bonus clips. Today we're gonna save a shrimp from a parasite. Let's go. Upon slurping in the sticky mud, I discovered a whole hype house full of shrimps with parasites. First shrimp to be rescued was Addison. And if you're wondering why I'm shaking so much, it's because she was trying so desperately hard to pinch my skinny fingers off. Stop it, Addison. I'm trying to help. There. Next up was Dixie. Now, Dixie was pretty chill, despite having a blood-sucking isopod in her gills. Good job, Dixie. Then there was Avani. She was a tricky patient. Once we got the female parasite removed, the male tried to stay behind. Not today, you albino roly-poly bug. Finally, there was Tony. Tony, Tony, baloney, fee, fi, foroni. Feel better, Tony. Once the parasites were removed, I yeet them into the compost bin. I was slurping in the thick sticky mud when all of a sudden I found Charlie and Chase just chilling with blood-sucking parasites attached to them. They've been great friends of mine for as long as I could remember, so I had to help get these parasites removed. Stay back, Franklin. First, I helped Charlie. I hope you feel better now, Charlie. Okay, that's one parasite down. Let's help the other shrimp. Next, I helped Chase. Bye, little fella. Can't leave my boy Franklin hanging. Yeet! Y'all know what time it is. My good friend Macy thought that she was gonna have to live the rest of her life with an invasive blood-sucking parasite on her gills. Not today, parasite. Yeet! I was walking in the mud when I found a tiny, cute shrimp just drying up in the sun. 
I picked up the squirmy little decapod and realized we were really far away from the water. It wasn't going to be easy to get her back to safety. I found a puddle near incoming water and set Olivia free. I was slurping when all of a sudden I found my old friend Noodles. That pesky parasite must have made its way out of my compost bin for a revenge attack. This time I fed that invasive monster to a hungry sea chicken, set Noodles free, and be sure to follow if you love ocean animals.